Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us on another month of Alum Spotlight here at Fire FC. I'm Nick Gumpert, our club education coordinator. And with me this month, we have Sherilyn Means, a.k.a. Sherilyn Stoffel, once upon a time. And Sherilyn, why don't you just give our, our audience an idea as to when you play? Because, again, you're an alum, um, but I won't try to remember it all. I'll leave it to you to, to share your story. It's been a couple years since I've played. Uh I want to say it was early 2000. I graduated high school in 2006 from Grand Junction High School. I lived in Junction through high school, played with the club all four of those years. Had some really great experiences being able to play with the club and have some different opportunities. And then it just led to a lot of other great opportunities in my life. Okay. So before we get to those additional opportunities, playing experience, club experience, you moved, you relocated from Junction at what age? -ish? I was 14. So it was right before I was going into high school that we moved from a small town to Junction, which felt way big for us. And from there, just the opportunities of being able to go play in Denver, being able to play on competitive teams and travel, um, it just opened the doors to a lot of other opportunities for me so did you play it was in craig right that you grew up prior to junction yes did you play soccer did you play competitively there or did you just kind of say i need to do something now that i'm in junction and and, and acquaint myself no i played competitively but it was i mean it was co-ed and stuff too where we'd be playing all boys teams and we had like four girls on the team because that was a small town, that's what you do when you don't have enough players for a full team. And then we eventually started getting more players, but I don't think we ever had like a full roster by any means. But we travel around to other small towns as well. And I did a little bit of the like ODP stuff at that time. It was a lot of commitment and a lot of travel. So that made it hard at that time when you're in a small town and you're driving every weekend, anywhere. I, you have that injunction some as well, but I, I definitely see you get a lot more exposure being in a bigger club. Right. Hold on. So you were an ODP when you lived in Cray playing co-ed? I was in it. And then I, I think I made it to like the round of 30 or something. And they were wanting us to travel oh. to Denver. Like I'd be missing practices during the week, but going to the end, it was just... I mean, this is years ago. I was just like, I don't know if I can really do this. And when I wasn't able to be there all the time, it, it wouldn't feel like you were always a part of the team as much. And, yeah. you know, traveling to Denver four plus hours made yes. it kind of hard at that time. I, I think what an accomplishment coming out of a, a co-ed environment, you were just making the best of the situation that you could. But you dipped into that space. And I think to give everybody a little bit of, of a reminder, ODP was, if you made that in the early 2000s, that, that was a very good accomplishment. And that's no disservice to those players, even that participate today. It was just different, right? Because it was different because the Boys Academy didn't exist. Girls, ECNL and GA oh. and a lot of these levels that now exist that pulled these players out of these ODP player pools, they didn't exist. So when you're oh. becoming a part of that at that age, yeah. I think... It speaks to your ability to maximize the the environment that you're in and not play the play the victim card of, well, I'm not in a big enough city to get exposure. I'm not in a big enough city to ever break into that. So that's awesome to to know that. I think it's what you make of it too. A lot of things are, you know, if if it's something that you want, you're going to try to make those experiences happen. You know, I wanted to play soccer. So if it was playing on a co ed team, that's what we were doing, you know, until we were able to get enough girls to then have our own team. And yes, we weren't playing in the most competitively at that time, but we were playing still. But I was going to camps. I remember going to Mesa State camps and just really trying to work as hard as I could to you know get seen just be there and to learn and to bring it all in well before we get there because it's funny you say makes a state and for maybe any of our audiences like makes a state <laughs> where's that little refresher that is called mesa university 
which was once upon a time makes a state and, and Sherilyn played for four years there. But before we get there, so you make the shift into junction. And one of the sticking points for me, remembering you as a player is it, it seemed like you're always chosen, whether it's by your coach or your peers as, as a captain. And that was at the club level. That was at the high school level. That was at the collegiate level. Can you speak to holding that role? Of course, it's a great honor, but here's what helped me stand out a little bit for those kids that are just like, I want that. And it's really interesting because, I mean, I'm a teacher now, so speaking in front of people, okay, I can speak in front of people. I, that doesn't bother me. But when I was growing up, I was very shy and I was like, I do not want to stand out. I, I'm i just going to do my thing and I'm going to work hard. And I think that's the thing is like, you put your head down, you do the work and you lead by example. And also just like, listening i think that's one of that's something that's really hard is listening to being there for your teammates what do your teammates need how can you help support them because i feel like you're only as as good as your other players around you you know if if they're working hard it makes you work hard you know you want to i mean that's how you create a great team how you gel together it's not one person it's the team that makes it well, and, and you're part of a unique group as well, uh, if I remember right. A lot of you, if not all of you, I think maybe it's the prior, that it's a lot of you went to Brazil together. Yeah. Wasn't it that the case yeah. with that group? Yeah, what yeah. What was that like and in, in what was that situation? I wish that I could go back and, you know, to my younger years and be like, you don't know how amazing this is. You know, when you're 16, you're just like, wow, this is so cool. But now being older, you're like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like I went to this other country without my parents and I got to meet all these amazing people, play soccer down there for two weeks. Like I, it's an experience that is just, I mean, it's once in a lifetime. It was for me for sure. and and to share it with my best friends, because my teammates, they were my best friends. And I mean, they, that's what makes the team. I really feel like if a team's gel and they get along and they build each other up and they're not trying to almost one up each other, that's, that's what brings you together. And you get to have those special moments and have some of your best friends for life. I have, yes. there's, it's, I mean, my best friends are mostly my soccer friends that I've had. I mean, I have my teacher best friends and all that, but those soccer friendships that I created, I still have to this day. And I know I, if I haven't talked to them for years and I see them, we can talk and it would be wonderful. It's a really cool connection that you can have with people. Absolutely. And then, so a lot of you went to Brazil in terms of your club team. It wasn't just like a mishmash, right? And then how about Junction, yeah. what was that? What was that dynamic as you split off in the high school uh, environment? Were, was it a lot of you that went to Junction? I, I don't remember. Yeah. So our team was pretty pretty much split between like Fruta and Junction. We had a couple at Palisade and a couple at Central, but a core of us were at both in the the team, the schools there. And we were competitive when we played each other. Like it was a rivalry. We wanted to beat the other player, but you can bet that the first thing we did after we were done playing is we went over and gave each other a hug because yeah. yes, we wanted to win, but those were our friends over there, you know, and that's, that's what makes it. I sure. just think with soccer's just brought so much friendship and it's, it's just brought so much more to me than just soccer and and the skills it's created like who I am as a person. And, and it's neat to hear that you still stay in touch with some of those, some of those teammates that, that you had just a couple of years ago. Let's segue into the space that you said you attended camps and you tried as hard as you could to get in front of coaches and you name dropped Mesa state again, now CMU. And now you played there, right? So let's dig into that mm -hmm. a little bit. Was there one game that the coach saw you that he's like, Carolyn, we need to talk by the way, great game, but here's what I really like, et cetera. Or was it by chance and you never really talked to the coach and it, you just kind of dropped in his lap? What do you remember about that recruiting experience and being able to stay in your hometown to play for uh, Mesa State? I remember it was really 
the connection and the welcoming I felt because we had Jim Buckin as uh, my head coach there. And he just made me feel like this is where you want to be. You know, that, and I can't remember one particular like, yes, this is it. I mean, there was benefits of my family was there too and I could play there and my friends and family could be there to support me. But to tell you the truth, my first year, I was not on a soccer scholarship. I mean, I committed and I signed and everything, but I was on an academic scholarship. So it was a matter of, I just can't think of one time that it was like, yeah, it was this game that they were like, yes, we want you. But it's just con- that constant, like you're around, you're at camps, you're at games, they see you and you're talking to them and you're making those connections. And then how about that opportunity then? Because you just shared with us that you didn't initially go on an athletic scholarship. So mm-hmm. did you did you get one ultimately? And, and if I remember right, you did. But it's more, again, it's you showing up every single day. It's that consistent Mm -hmm. performance around it. Can you speak to that a little bit of of what were, was your ego hurt a little bit to be like, you know what? I didn't get it in poor me or was like, yeah, I still have an opportunity because I'm playing at a, at a collegiate level. To me, it didn't matter. I was doing what I loved and ultimately I had a scholarship that I didn't have to worry about things. So it it wasn't something that was necessary. And it ended up that the next year I did get a scholarship, which was wonderful. And then, I, I mean, and then I ended up getting hurt. So it's one of those crazy things of, you know, when I didn't have a scholarship, I was playing all the time there. And then when I did have a scholarship, I was end up being hurt for a year. I really believe things happen for a reason. And it all worked out. I want to say it was my junior year that I became a captain. Yeah, because my sophomore year, I tore my ACL. I remember just going through two a days, working super hard. They were opening the brand new stadium. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. It was to the point where we didn't even get a practice in the stadium. And Nick, I bet, I think, were you there at that time too? I don't yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, my year was the first year of the program. For the, on the okay, side. yeah. So I think it was that year too, and it was where we practiced at Long's Field. Yeah, yes. And, and we would be having our two days there, and then we had our first home game, and I think it was our second game of the year. First home game, a couple minutes into playing, tore my ACL on the field, and it was just devastating. It was like, oh my no god, contact. no. You were just changing direction. I thought it was contact, if, if I remember right, but everyone <laughs> tells me no one was my biggest. <laughs> I guess there was no contact technically. <laughs> it was crushing. And I remember when, because we kind of had a, a little bit of a rough year that year. My freshman year, we had no seniors on our team. We had like 11 freshmen. And so we were all super young and and. It was wonderful because there was no expectations. We were just like, we're going out here and we're having fun. And it wasn't like, you have to win. But we were winning because we were playing for each other and we cared about each other. And it was no like, it, no one was like, oh, I'm, I'm the oldest, so I'm the best. It was just, we're out there having fun. And so then my sophomore year came in and we had quite a few injuries, quite a few ACL tears that year and it was it was a little bit of a rough year and unfortunately injuries happened so nothing we can do about it but once we when when everyone was practicing I would say there was a moment that some some people on the team were like oh I don't want to do this I don't want to and they were kind of complaining about things and I thought to myself I was like I would give anything to be out there because I was sitting on the sideline And I was doing, you know, I was doing rehab on my own time. I was at the practice. Like I was working to try to get back. And I was just like, why are people complaining right now? They get to be out here doing this every day. And I just want to be out there so bad. So that really gave me like a different perspective on things. I was like, okay, I'm going to work as hard as I can to get back on there. And I think right at the, I think it was the six mark, six month mark. I went out and played terrified, of course, because I did not want to tear it again. 
But I went out there and I was like, oh, I can do this. And I just was not going to let anything stop me. That's awesome. And my sophomore year, we got a new coach in the springtime. And I, I think it was Damien from Fort Lewis. Do you remember him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then he ended up he getting was- a job at, in uh, Durango. And so he ended up leaving. Yeah. And then Aaron Sharp came in. And I think mm-hmm. then you became our, became our assistant. Was that it? Yeah. After my senior year. Okay. Aaron asked okay. me to assist. Yeah. And then junior year, that went pretty well. I mean, we just were all out there having fun, working hard. Yeah. Um, had a good year that year. And had then a good year. Senior year. Was that another injury year for you? It was. It was. That was a hard year. That was really hard. Going through a coaching change is really difficult too. When you go from the coach that had recruited you and they had one idea for you and then you have a new coach coming in and they might have a different idea, that can be really challenging. So working through those things, I learned a lot about myself. I just take it as I was able to grow a lot. But I did end up breaking my leg in three places. And so I did not finish. I mean, I finished my senior year in a cast, but it was, it was really rough. There was, there was a lot of, a lot of those things. And we were, I want to say we were, I don't, I think we struggled some that year. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Record wise, overall record. Yeah. yeah, Might have been around 500, maybe a little below. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was just one win. And I think this is hard too. When you're not winning, the morale can go down. And so once that started happening, it was like, well, this person's not doing, or, you know, we're not doing this. And it's, it can get hard. And I mean, that's with anything in life though. When things aren't necessarily going that perfect way, it's like spiraling in your ear, like, okay. But I really do think there's lessons in everything and you can grow from it. Yeah. And that, that's how I took it. You know, I have great friends from my college career. I wouldn't take anything back from it. The good times, the bad times, it, it's part of what makes you who you are. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to reemphasize a point that you, you seem to keep coming back to. And whether it's something good or, or something you didn't want it to play out exactly like it did, you're, you're seeing it as a, as a learning opportunity versus a, I wish that didn't happen. And I just wanted to get that over with and let the next year come already because I was so over it. And if our audience doesn't get anything out of out other than that, it would be that. And make sure I would say even rewind it if you have to hear some of it, because okay. it's such an important perspective, especially for our athletes listening to this, because how we choose to frame stories in our head becomes a very important place to draw memories from and to say that was a re- really regrettable time in my life or that was a hard time in my life, but I still worked through it, right? Mm-hmm. And, and the importance that in responsibility that all of us have is that we get to frame our stories however we choose. And when we choose to play that victim card to say, well, they other people did it to me and I couldn't control my coach and that was the worst situation. It's, it's not a matter of making the perfect decision, but how do you make it as good as possible, right? Regardless of, of what it is. So and I think a very important just reminder for, for everybody that's trying to navigate through their own stories that you all understand we have. Sherilyn, anything else to add to I think a big thing too, like, I feel like I was pretty blessed to have some really good coaches in my life. I would say Peter was one that really influenced me in many ways. And from that, he then kind of uh, just, just him as a coach. And even, you know, as a person, I was like, wow, I see what he's doing with the club. And that's what ended up leading me into going to the club and coaching there. But I do want to say to the players as well is like, you might have coaches that you don't necessarily get along with, or maybe your philosophy is a little different than theirs. But there's, I, it's good to have those different ideas and opinions because I have learned so much more about oh, I didn't do it this way, but oh, now I can see why we did this or why we did that. It it goes back to that growing piece. Um, If we were all the same, it would just be boring. We wouldn't get anything done. 
I mean, we'd go out there and all you'd be doing is like, oh, pass the ball back. No, you need to have that. That's what pushes you and what drives you. And uh, I just want players to really have that open mm -hmm. mind of, and you're not going to always like everyone. You're not going to like all of your teammates at times, but how can you work through that? And how can you learn to work together? Because that's the ultimate goal. What you want to work together, you would love to win. And that's what, how you're going to end up growing. Absolutely. And so Sherilyn, let's navigate to what you're doing now. So playing days are over and graduation happened for you uh, just a couple of years ago. And so now you've shifted into what career path these days? Yes. So I have known like my whole life, I wanted to be a teacher. In high school, I would go and volunteer in the classrooms when I, one of the reasons I went to Mesa State was that it had a great educational program. I knew I was going to be a teacher. I graduated from high school, I, or high school from college, I had subbed for a year and a half because at that time it was kind of a rough time to be a teacher because there were a lot of cuts happening and no jobs open, which can make it a little defeating when you're looking for a job and there's nothing available. But then it came about that I ended up getting a job. And since then, I've been teaching this my 13th year. And I, I, I love what I do. And that's, that's why I do it. And I think a lot of what I've also learned from soccer can be connected into my career now. Um, I'm never done learning and growing and having people give me feedback. And if it's not, the feedback that you necessarily want to hear. Sometimes it's the feedback that you need to hear. And it could be have an open mind, try these new things, which is hard. And yeah, it's yeah. been teaching for 13 years. And <laughs> it it wasn't easy. I worked two to three jobs at a time. When I first started teaching, I was coaching with the club for six years and I ran the player development program which I loved. I I really don't know how I used to teach for like eight, nine hours and then go out to the field for another four hours and then do it again. Now that I'm older, I'm like, wow, I wish I had some of that energy. Oh, and then I was also waitressing on the weekends too, but I was going to do what I needed to do to get things done and to make everything work how I wanted, to make the life that I wanted. Yeah. So that's what I did. So now that I have been teaching for a little bit longer, we moved to Arizona three years ago, and I was able to only work one job, which was wonderful. It worked out at the time. And then my husband's job ended up moving us down um, to Texas. And now I'm teaching down here. In San Antonio. In right. San Antonio, yeah. So we moved from yeah. Phoenix down to San Antonio. So in the last three years, I've moved a long ways away. Yeah, farther and farther from, from your roots. Yes, yes. My my parents are, are getting really good at flying now, getting those frequent flyer miles. Putting them to good use. Oh, yeah, definitely. So. No, uh, I appreciate you taking the time. And, and again, I think it's always neat for our current player pool and, and parent pool to see where, where have past players gone? What have they done? What are they up to now? So that's the exact reason why we wanted to start this on one spotlight is to spot individuals like yourself. So thank you again, Sherilyn, <laughs> for taking the time and sure. sharing your story. Hopefully it resonated with, with some of our listeners out there. So listeners, until next month, this is this month. 